The Philco Manila has a really strong fan base thanks to its iconic design that goes so far back that Philco claims that it's the first keyboard to use layers. The one that I have here was given to me by my friend Adeem. So it has a lot of sentimental value and it's something that I've never wanted to really get rid of. We kind of had a trade years ago where we both love fighting games so I gave him one of my spare arcade sticks that I don't use anymore and in return he knew I was getting into keyboards so he gave me his Philco Manila. For good reason, it had MX Blues and he hated them. Uh, I knew I didn't like them either, but I assured him that I was pretty confident in desoldering the switches and switching it out. And I was sorely wrong. It took me four to five years to eventually do it. But between the time where I did, I put in mods like foam. I actually switched out the foam like three times just to see the differences. And I've tape modded it. And I've also done some force breaks mod on it as well. In the end, I never really got to a point where I really enjoyed the keyboard. So I did end up switching out the switches with some KO Box Blacks. The switches were great outside the keyboard, but the moment they were in the keyboard, I really hated them. Here's a sound test for the KO Box Blacks, just so you can see a before and after. They're not horrible, but in a case that's already subpar, I think the negative is really shown in the acoustics. Unfortunately, the switches had interference issues with the Corsair stabs to the point where the modifiers just wouldn't even bottom out. You would get this really strong resistance and I actually had to cut the housing of the switches just so that the Corsair stabs could move. And alongside that, the noise that the stems made were really loud to the point where even if you were just lightly tapping on the keys without activating it, it would cause really loud chatter in between the keys and I've actually got a sound test for you here. I'm at the point now where I do look at the board and I feel regret so hopefully with today's mods I'm going to have something that I'm really proud of. For anyone that wants to actually attempt something like this, desoldering can be really difficult at first, but there is something that I learned basically in the factories where people mass produce boards, they'll use a solder that is just basically industrial grade and it is really difficult to desolder because of, I think it's a high melting temperature to melt. So if you get your own solder, and actually solder onto the existing solder and mix it up, it makes it much more easy for you to use a solder sucker and pull it out.
After desoldering the board, you can actually appreciate the PCB that Philco made. It's multi-layout for every region that consists of GIS, ISO and ANSI. Of course, the plate locks you into whichever version you purchased in your region, but I was genuinely surprised to see this kind of PCB from a board so old. The first thing I needed to do was make plate form for the board. I hadn't seen anyone online except for one person from Vietnam say that they had plate form for the board and I couldn't find any sellers at all, so I had to make one myself. I did have a sheet of sorbophane lying around from previous mods, so I just stuck that to the plate and cut out the holes myself. I did try to use a blade, but with every attempt, the foam kept tearing. So what I ended up doing was using my soldering iron to melt the holes and pulling them out. It definitely isn't elegant, but they definitely perform how I intended, and it got rid of a lot of the plate vibration. After making my own plate foam, I also put O-rings on every standoff. There are standoffs on the bottom of the case, and the ones that you see here are actually on the plate itself. This plate actually pushes against the PCB, so every time you actually type a key, you are putting vibration on the plate itself. So hopefully with some plate foam and these O-rings, I'm eliminating as much vibrations on the plate as much as I can. After that, we can get onto the switches. I went the lazy route and decided this time to go for a switch that was pre-lubed. I got them from KeyCats and they're the KTT Laurel Poms. From the name, you can already tell that the housing is completely made out of POM. The switch is linear and is pretty light, gold plated spring, and the travel distance is pretty short. So I think this is a long pole, but most importantly, the mounting for it is free pin. I did end up having to work on them just a little bit more because the second switch that I picked up and tested, it actually had spring ping. I don't want to regret another rebuild of this, so I just opened them all up and I dipped all of the springs in 205 grade zero and that was it because the stems were looped great and only one or two maybe had leaf ping, but the switches were perfect apart from the springs, so I didn't mind it too much. After putting the switches back together, we can now reassemble the board. We're gonna solder it all back together. And at the end, I went for a keycap set by Dolmi Key. It's a triple shot ABS. I mainly went for it for the budget. They give you two alphas in an all-in-one set and they sell extras of the kits. So you can spend about an extra 30 pounds. If you split it, you get two sets of keycaps for 150 pounds. So dividing it by two, you know, that's a lot cheaper than some other sets going around these days. So if you want to see what I did with the other set, you can check on my channel because I made a tofu build for my brother last Christmas. And before this video, I think that was my favorite board that I built, but I think this one's kind of taken over.
so i'm not extremely deep into the keyboard hobby i don't have a lot of money and you know i just don't have the means to buy high-end keyboards so when i'm making these boards i don't go for a specific sound in mind i'm not here for thox or clex i'm just here to kind of enjoy the beauty of having so many parts come together and just having a beautiful sound the sound that this board produces isn't like any of the other boards that i have um this is by far the loudest one that i have but just from the amount of work that i've put in it's it's actually genuinely become one of my favorite boards especially knowing that it's a board that my friend gave me i don't think i could ever get rid of this and at the moment i've been using this board a lot more frequently than my other ones that cost three times as much but that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video i honestly um if you if you did like it i can't promise another keyboard anytime soon honestly you don't even need to subscribe or anything because i don't have enough money to make any more keyboards